They whipped us pretty good last year. Brazilian football team. A terrific coach, Jerry Kill, calls it a career. That will be one inspired football team when they host Michigan. And we welcome you to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hilton. And we bring you to TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, our Big Ten matchup tonight. The 15th ranked Wolverines of Michigan against the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. And on this Halloween night, playing for the oldest trophy in college football, the LeBron Jug. First time they played for it 112 years ago tonight. So that's at stake. Wolverines trying to keep pace in the Big Ten. Minnesota has had an emotional week with the resignation of Jerry Kill, their head coach. So that makes Tracy Clays the interim head coach of the Gophers. He's done this before on a fill-in basis when Jerry had health problems. He does it tonight and now for the rest of the Minnesota season. And maybe longer. The Gophers won the toss and they want the football. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our ESPN crew on a pretty nice night, actually, in Minneapolis. And obviously, a confident Minnesota group coming into the game, the lowest scoring team in the Big Ten. Michigan's defense, one of the best in the country, leading the nation in a number of defensive categories, and they won them right away. So Kenneth Allen has got it teed up. Jalen Myrick and KJ May are back deep for Minnesota. Last year, as you heard in the open when Jim Harbaugh said they beat us pretty good, Minnesota with a 30 to 14 win a year ago. And that sideline in gray uniforms for the very first time in honor of their coach that resigned on Wednesday. Kick about five yards deep. And Myrick won't bring it out, but Mitch Leidner will. And moments ago, in honor of his coach, Jerry Kill, Mitch Leidner had the gopher flag and was running through the end zone and planted it down there in front of the student body in the end zone and then carried it all the way down the other way. Well, he's not your everyday quarterback. He's different in a lot of ways. A big strapping guy. At one point, they thought he might be a linebacker here, and he plays quarterback with a linebacker mentality. So the Gophers will start from the 25-yard line. Leidner, a little over 1,300 yards passing, seven touchdowns, six interceptions, and has three rushing touchdowns as well. As Todd said, tough guy. And off play action on a bootleg is going to throw on first down. Too high and too long intended for Drew Wolitarski. As we take a look at our Chick fil A impact players tonight, KJ May is. The big play guy from Minnesota, both as a return man and as a receiver. Willie Henry leads Michigan in sacks. Jabril Peppers, we might see him all over the field tonight, both offensively and on defense, where he's one of the better defensive backs in the country. Very instinctive defensive player. Has a real nose for the football. Two wideouts both to the right side as Minnesota runs it for a couple, maybe three. As Rodney Smith brought down by Joe Bolden and it brings up the first third down of the night and third down against Michigan's not been easy this year. No, especially when you're third down in more than seven yards which they are right now first time out of the gate only 19 percent conversions their opponents that's phenomenal numbers. They rush the passer well they like to pressure and then they've got a couple guys in the back end that can really cover in Jordan Lewis and Jabril Peppers. Rashad still joins the wide receiver core for Minnesota. Three for Leidner, and that's still in motion. Leidner down the middle, lofts one and has got his man for a first down, and it is Rashad still. Pickup of 16. Well, nice job by Still. He turned his man in coverage. He's on the left side of your screen. He's going to run a little corner route, and he turned his man around. And a nice throw with timing. By Leidner, knowing the pressure was going to come, he got rid of that ball on perfect timing. Now Minnesota comes at back in with a fullback in Miles Thomas. 
I think their best opportunity is going to be able to throw the football on first down. They converted that third down, but they don't want to make a living doing that. Again, play action. And again, down the middle, this time a man was open but underthrown. K.J. May was the intended receiver. Maximum protection. They kept the tight end in, the fullback in. There were really only two receivers out in the route. And Michigan with excellent defense on that play action pass. Both first down plays. Minnesota has tried to go play action. It has not fooled the Michigan defense yet. So second down at 10. 21 seasons. Tracy Clays has been together with Jerry Kill. This coaching staff, for the most part, all of them have been together for about two decades. So there's some cohesiveness and consistency in that area, even though the head coach is an interim head coach now. Pick up of about three for Rodney Smith, and again, Bold in the middle linebacker is in on the stop. This linebacker group from Michigan has played a lot of ball. Bolden, Desmond Morgan, James Ross combined 78 starts. Uh, they are a veteran group, read and react extremely well. So Minnesota picked up a third and seven with that 16 yard pass play. They got third down and six here. Just inside their own 49 yard line. KJ May is their go to receiver down at the bottom. Guy in motion. Try to isolate coverage by doing that. And a blitz coming from the Wolverines as Leiter fires far side. Caught by May. First down, Minnesota. Boy, that had to be a good throw because that was pretty good coverage by Jerry Wilson. See, when you put a guy in motion, it's harder to double cover him. And you can read whether it's going to be man or zone or you maybe create the matchup you want. That's a tough throw to the outside by Leidner. And on two third down and long situations, he's come up with big time throws. So Minnesota taking the football first and making the best of it right now. They moved into Michigan territory at the 44 yard line. Career high 11 catches for KJ a week ago, or two weeks ago, I should say, against Nebraska. And that one's going nowhere. Ryan Glasgow makes the stop on Shannon Brooks. No Both buddy. of the Gopher tailbacks from the state of Georgia. Brooks is a true freshman out of Jasper, Georgia. Nobody has run the ball successfully against this Michigan defense. Even two weeks ago, Michigan State, a power running football team, only 58 yards rushing on 33 attempts. DJ e. Durkin, the defensive coordinator, done an outstanding job with this group. Eighth play of the Minnesota opening drive. Leidner, plenty of time. Fires to the near sideline and out of bounds. KJ May had a hand on it, but ran out of real estate over there. And it'll bring up third down. And on third and seven, they got 17. And the last third and six, they got seven. Yeah. So doing well on this drive on third down conversions. But again, the, the numbers don't lie for Michigan. Opponents coming into the game 19 for 97 on third down against them. And uh, <laughs> Minnesota living dangerously right now. This is a Michigan defense that pitched three straight shutouts. First time in a couple of decades that's happened. On third and ten. Leidner hit as he throws. Incompletes. That was intended for Wolitarski. Well, James Ross, one of those linebackers, the guy that got in there, came on a little outside stunt, came unblocked. Should have been picked up. It was only a four-man rush, and James Ross came clean and got a shot on Leidner, and Leidner not able to step into that throw. Peter Mortel will come in to punt. Mortel's knocked 18 inside the 20 this year and should be able to try to pin Jabril Peppers back inside his own 10 yard line. And flag down. Full start. Offense, number 46. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Mortel probably doesn't mind. Yeah. Gives him a little more room to punt it. You know, pretty decent first possession. For Minnesota, a couple conversions. It's it's very important that they get off to a good start. They've been outscored 47 to 10 in the first quarter this season, and uh, they want to keep this thing close and keep the crowd involved as long as they can. Front high spiral, and at about the 15-yard line, Peppers makes the fair catch. 
Jake Rudock takes over for Michigan. Quarterback transferred from Iowa. Nothing flashy about him either, really, Todd. No, there isn't. He's just a guy that Jim Harbaugh calls a, an ascending player, which means he's getting better each week. He threw five interceptions in his first three games, three in the opener at Utah. It was only one interception his last four games. So he is continuing to grow in this offense. He's a leader. He's a mature guy. And right now he's doing everything Jim Harbaugh wants from that position. So the Wolverines start from their own 15. Davion Smith, the tailback, they fake it to him. Rudock comes up, firing down the middle. Somebody got a hand on that in roots. Yeah. I think it was Jack Lynn, maybe yeah. the linebacker. Jack Lynn had a had a chance to get two hands on it. Not able to come up with the interception. He had an open receiver. You see number 50 right there, his eyes on the quarterback. Otherwise, that's a completion over the middle. A little Halloween thing going on for Jack. The stretch play the Smith trying to get to the edge got about three a Lynn was in on the stop again as we take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. J.U. Chesson big time player both as a kick returner they are using a lot of spots as well as running the football two excellent corners in Murray and Myrick Myrick leads the Gophers in interceptions with three. So here's the first third down situation for Michigan. 41% on the year. And it's third down at seven. Darbo in motion up top. Rudock looking that way. Fires sideline. Nice catch and a first down. Taken out of bounds. Jake Butts. Butts is a big target. From the tight end position at six foot six, 250. This is a short throw, thrown from the near hash to the near sideline. And Rudock delivers it on time for the first down. 65th catch of Jake's career at tight end for Michigan. And it's a first down at the 27. Carriage the fullback in the eye. Second man throws the tailback and he gets buried for a loss of one. Davion Smith leveled by Andrew Steltler. Quick penetration by Steltler. Second down and long, loss of yardage play. You know, Tracy Clay is the interim head coach, the former defensive coordinator. He's on the sideline instead of up in the press box. So some different logistics for the defensive staff and how they're calling defensive signals in the ball game tonight. You can see with that loss of one, when Michigan runs the ball well, they win. When not, that's when they suffer their two losses. There's a strike. Great throw, Darbo. That was a laser shot to pick up a 16. Single coverage, a deep middle safety, and a little slant route. He gets off the hands, and a nice throw again. The timing critical for Rudolph because Minnesota had some pressure in there, and he got rid of it quickly. And out in front of the receiver, we could catch it with his hands. 29th catch for Darbo, and a first down at the 41 for Michigan. Play action. Rudock wants a whole bunch. Deep ball. Man out there. Just overshot him. Demario Jones, the intended receiver. Minnesota had pretty good coverage by Eric Murray. The Minnesota defense felt pretty confident coming into this game going against Jake Rudock because they played against him last year when he was at Iowa. Minnesota won that game a year ago. In, in grand fashion, 51 to 14. Jake Rudock only 89 yards passing in the game, had a fumble and interception. They sacked him three times. So, in terms of having a scouting report, they know Jake Rudock. Seven play of the Michigan drive, and Jabril Peppers is in on offense. They keep it on the ground straight up the middle. Smith got maybe four. It's going to bring up third down again. Well, I expected that they would have a larger play selection package for Jabril Peppers. He is a dynamic football player. He shows up as a returner and on defense. He had two receptions a week ago for 38 yards. This shows you how much confidence they have. Third down, and he's on the field. Third down and a long six. Rudock in the gun. 
getting some pressure. He's going to just shovel past it. It's intercepted by Minnesota. Gophers have got it. Buddy Calhoun, the cornerback, with the interception. Well, this is one that Rudolph should have just run and tried to pick up the first down. He starts to run, and at the last minute, he tries to flip it to his tailback, Davion Smith. Devondre Campbell got the deflection and a huge turnover for the Minnesota defense. The seventh interception by the Gopher defense this year, and it sets up their offense in Michigan territory. First interception suffered by Rudock in his last 65 passes. See if Minnesota wants to try to strike early after the turnover. They'll keep it on the ground, and that only will strike about a yard. Pick up of one by Shannon Brooks. We mentioned some of the change logistically with the resignation of Jerry Kill. Offensively, it doesn't really affect Minnesota. They're, they're the same setup. Matt Limegrover, the offensive coordinator, offensive line coach, he's still up in the press box. So their offensive play calling and signaling, everything is going to be the same. Defensively, they've had to make a few adjustments. And, and even for Tracy Clays, he's listening to the offense on the headset for the first time as well. Leidner under center now. Play action. Now he goes deep into traffic. Did he catch it? He did. Well, they got lucky there because they have two receivers running to the exact same spot. And that's not supposed to happen. Brandon Lingen, number 86, is the guy that's going to come up with the football. Watch the tight end at the top of your screen, 86. He's running a corner route. The receiver's running in the same spot. They both put their hands out. And it falls in between three Michigan defenders. A little lucky, but they'll take it. Minnesota in the red zone, and Michigan doesn't even allow very many people to get to that point. The red zone, that is. Minnesota with a first down and trying to take advantage of the interception. And timeout taken by Leidner. They don't want to waste an opportunity here in the first timeout. quarter. Minnesota. We'll take a timeout as well. 7-19 remaining in the first quarter. No score here, Minneapolis. An interception. Thrown by Jake Rudock, and the Gophers are in the red zone right now with an opportunity to score. And they called timeout before this play. Probably smart. They've had four first down plays so far, only have gained one yard. Ling in the tight end sets up on the right side. He's the guy that had the 31 yard reception that got them where they are right now. Leitner throws on the run in the oh, corner. He, the tight end. he had his tight end crossing the field wide open. Lingen, who made the big catch to get him down there, was open again. Leidner looking to the sideline and missed an opportunity for what would have been a touchdown throw, I think. Brings up second down and 10. Brooks comes back in at tailback. If you want to see tight ends and fullbacks tonight, you'll see them for both teams, including Miles Thomas, the fullback from Minnesota, who's down to the bottom of your screen. KJ May. In motion on second and ten. Leidner down the middle. He's got May for a first down. It's first and goal for the Gophers. Two times they've gotten the ball to their playmaker, K.J. May. Both times they put him in motion. Again, it's harder to get tight coverage on him when you put him in motion. The little play fake froze the linebackers, and May slipped in right behind him. Good design on that play. And a good throw by Leidner. Pickup of 11. First and goal, Minnesota at the Michigan Six. Leidner, a good, tough runner in this part of the field as well. Michigan with a blitz. Leidner with a rollout, has time again and throws this one in the dirt. Yeah, only one receiver. They had a couple receivers out on the back side of the route. The fullback was the only receiver on the play side, Miles Thomas, and Gerard Wilson in good coverage. Michigan chains up bodies defensively. It's second down a goal. Minnesota with two tight ends in there. Lingen and Wozniak. Red zone scoring on the year. Minnesota 
Again, this Michigan defense has only given up a total of 65 points the whole season. Straight ahead goes Brooks. Got to the four, maybe inside the four. And it brings up third down a goal. Jim Harbaugh in his first season as a head coach of the Wolverines. Well, this is just a critical possession for Minnesota. They're off to a good start. Their defense got the interception. Their offense is inside the five-yard line, but we well, have to capitalize. Against a defense this good, when you get this kind of opportunity, you don't want to have to settle for a three-point attempt. Live there, their quarterback has three rushing touchdowns this year. Todd said he's a tough runner. Set the throw here. Maybe. Maybe not. And now he's brought down. There's a flag down. Desmond Morgan drops him for a loss. I think Michigan might have been offside. Offside. Defense number five. Half the distance to the goal. Will be third down. So third down, and it moves them closer to the Wolverines goal line. Jabril Peppers. And now Minnesota will come back in with their heavy personnel as they move closer. Peppers is, is lined up offsides. He didn't jump. He just lined up offside. This is where I would expect a quarterback run now with extra blockers. You've got a couple tight ends, a couple fullbacks in the game. Oh, they're going to have to call another timeout, possibly. It looks like it. And they will. Wow. Two timeouts burnt in the first Time 10 minutes. Out. Minnesota. We'll take one as well. Critical third down and goal for the Golden Gophers offensively. Coming up when we come back. ESPN College Football is presented by Hilton.com, where you can book unbeatable prices on 12 unbeatable hotel brands. And in part by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. 102nd meeting between Michigan and Minnesota, the 95th meeting for the Little Brown Jug, the oldest trophy in college football. First time they played for it was 112 years ago today. <laughs> happy Halloween, everybody. It's going to be a happy Halloween for Minnesota if they can punch this in on third down and goal. I would expect quarterback run, but if they throw it, this tight end right here, number 80, is six foot ten, a big target. The run's going nowhere. Lost back wow. to the five by Shannon Brooks in a nice play by Maurice Hurst. Yeah, great penetration from Hurst. He slipped into the block of the tackle. Ben Lauer, the left tackle, tried to cut him off, and Hurst was too quick off the ball and made the play in the backfield. And again, this Michigan defense, only 65 points the entire season that they've given up. Great discipline on that third down play. Santoso's 10 out of 13 on the year. This is a 23 yard field goal attempt, and it is good. So Minnesota gets on the board first, had a golden opportunity to try to get a touchdown there and had to settle for three. When I walked off the practice field, I feel like a part of me died. You all know about the struggles, and I did my best to change. But some of those struggles have returned, and I don't want to cheat the game. Jerry Kill, who resigned on Wednesday because of health problems, Jerry's had epilepsy issues and seizures that have been uh, well documented I guess this is Mitch Leidner the quarterback before the game with the Jerry Soda flag pretty cool yeah Jerry's a friend of mine and uh, I know he's home with Rebecca watching the game tonight didn't want to distract anybody by coming to the stadium apparently but uh, not only a great coach one of the great guys and uh, we wish him the best and in his place now as the interim head coach is Tracy Clays We'll document Tracy a little bit here in a second after Jabril Peppers picks up the ball at the one yard line after almost fumbling it and brings it all the way out to the 42. So 
Tracy Clays has been with Jerry Kill for 21 years. We were talking to him yesterday, and you said, you know, he's he's one of your best friends, not just the coach you worked under. And, and Tracy got very emotional at that point in our meeting. He's been the interim coach. He's been the acting coach. Um, you know, he filled in for Jerry when he had problems a couple of years ago. They've been together forever, and now he is the acting head coach, or the uh, interim head coach, I should say. And it may go on beyond, uh, beyond that. We asked him, do you want the job? You bet I want the job here at Minnesota. But he said, I don't want him to give it to him. I think the staff has earned it. This staff's been together forever. He's not the only guy that's been with Jerry that long. Yeah. So great continuity and consistency with a coaching staff, even with Coach Kill not here tonight. Four and a half remaining here at 3-0 game. Let's find out what's going on elsewhere as we check in with Adnan for the first time. All right, Adnan, Minnesota, their defense right now looking at a Michigan team in their territory. It was second down at two. Rudak, nice play fake, wants his tight end, and he's got him. See, that's the beauty of having a big target tight end who's got good hands. I mean, that ball would have been thrown way over the head of most receivers. I mean, he really got that thing up in the air. Jake Butts is 6'6", six, six, and he goes up and catches the ball at the top of his jump. I mean, that's a hard pass to defend because he's wide open when you throw it that high. First down for the Wolverines at the Minnesota 31-yard line. Butt comes out of the backfield and sets up as the tight end on the left. On the ground, pickup of a couple. It's Derek Green on the carry. Mentioned Tracy Clays, the, he's been with Jerry Kill forever, started as a defensive coordinator with him at Emporia State, and has been his coordinator every other stop after that, Southern Illinois, Northern Illinois, and now at Minnesota. Well, now, as the interim head coach, he's not calling the defensive signal. Jay Savell, who's a secondary coach, is calling the defenses. Tracy's going to be involved in any adjustments they make, but this is kind of new territory for both of those guys this week. Second and seven at the go for 28. They fake the end around. Rudock's got all day to throw. Finds his man, first down. Good throw decision. to Smith out of the backfield. Real good decision. He was looking for Jehu Chesson on a crossing round. They were going for a big play, a touchdown kind of play, and Davion Smith was the outlet. Watch 86 now cross the formation. He's going to run the crossing route, and he's not open. Minnesota covers him, and Rudolph did the smart thing. Dump it down to your check down and get a positive gain, get a first down. Michigan 24 out of 25 in the red zone, and that includes 17 touchdowns. So they've got it, the Minnesota 13. The fullback straight ahead. And that's Carriage, one of their captains inside the 10 yard line. That's interesting. You, you just don't see many teams anymore in college football that play with a fullback. And not only does Michigan play with one under Jim Harbaugh, they give him the football. I mean, that run by Carriage was the 26th rushing attempt by a Michigan fullback this year. That's almost unheard of right. in college football anymore. That's the 10th carry by Carriage. Second down and six, they can get a first down around the three. Smith trying to break a tackle, holding on for dear life is Devondre Campbell. And he brings him down just short of the first down, I believe. See a little bit of the power of Davion Smith, a very physical runner. 5'11", to almost 230 pounds out of Warren, Ohio. Breaks through arm tackle. Seventh play of the Michigan drive. Third down, less than one. And it's Smith behind his fullback and two tight ends in there. Power football. It's a fullback again getting a little sugar, and he's got it first and goal. Last time we saw a fullback have two carries on one drive was 1967. <laughs> <laughs> Or a Stanford game, maybe, when Jim Harbaugh coached there, yeah. too. It's just a quick hitter. You get double teams, good push up front by the Michigan offensive line. 
You know, one of the things about this Michigan offense, these five offensive linemen have started in the same position every game. Great continuity. They're getting better and better each week. Running the football. Power football right now. Three tight ends in there for Michigan on first and goal. Play action bootleg. At the last second to the back of the end zone, incomplete intended for Jake Butt. He was open. They're going to get a late hit on the quarterback, though. This was really well defended by Minnesota. They knocked down one of the tight end eligible receivers. They covered the other ones, but they hit the quarterback after the ball was released out of bounds. Personal foul. Weapon of pass. Defense, number 11. Half the distance to the goal. Up at the first down. Antonio Johnson, Tracy Clays, doesn't like the call. Really well defended as the ball's released. They, it's a late hit. Yeah. I mean, Tracy didn't like it, but that's the right call. Yeah, and it's right in the chin, too. And it's first and goal, Michigan. Just outside the one. The fullback's carried twice down here. The tailback right now is Davion Smith. It's the fullback again, and it's a Michigan touchdown for Carriage. Three fullback runs. That's Jim Harbaugh football. Well, they get the double team by the right guard and the right tackle. They bring an extra offensive lineman in, and it's just straight ahead. Power drive football. Watch the double team here. The center gets a block and give it to the up back. Extra point by Kenneth Allen. Snap was a little bit low. They got the hold down. He got the extra point through. And with just 38 seconds remaining in the half, in the first quarter, I should say, Michigan taking the lead 7-3. That's some pretty good costumes here tonight. That's just a real bad slam on the punter for Michigan from what happened two weeks ago. For Blake O'Neill, the disaster against Michigan State on the last play of the game. And Minnesota will bring it out to the 25. We'll take it out to Adnan Burke. Here in the Big Ten, 7-3, Michigan. They capped off that 57-yard drive in eight plays with Carriage, the fullback with a one-yard touchdown plunge. Well, one thing that Mitch Leidner needs to get squared away here, he's 0 for 3 throwing on first down. For them to have a chance, he has to be efficient throwing it on first down. That's the best time to throw against this Michigan defense. Brandon Lingen, the tight end in motion. He wanted to throw to him right there, I think, and Michigan was all over him defensively. Ryan Glasgow with a flag down makes the hit on Leidner. And we'll see what the penalty's about. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield by the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. That's too many. Yeah. Well, and again, you, you, if you're Minnesota, you don't have to think about trying to play a perfect game. But you can't have too many mistakes like that, and you've got to take advantage of opportunities. This Michigan defense has been as good as anybody in the country through the first seven games. And so when you get chances to make plays, you have to capitalize. What you don't want to do is find yourself in first down at 15 situations a lot. Three wideouts for Leidner to the top, and it's Smith straight ahead. He got the penalty yardage plus one back. Pick up six, and that should take us to the end of the first quarter. And it will on this Halloween night. Michigan on the road. The Big Ten leading the Golden Gophers 7 to 3. They've handled it very well so far. They've played that first quarter pretty solid. Well, they trail 7 to 3 as we start quarter number two. Jake Rudock's been intercepted once. That led to the Minnesota field goal. And here it is, third down again. They managed third down beautifully early in their first drive. Picked up a third and seven, a third and six. They've got another third and six right here. They've had some success 
getting the ball to KJ May, putting him in motion and moving him and getting him on the run. Two of four on the third down conversion so far. Need to get to the 35 to pick up a first down here. Leidner down the middle and looking for a flag is Wolotarski and he's not going to get one. Jabril Peppers was covering. There was contact, but no call. Peppers working on Wolotarski. So that'll bring out the punting unit, and Peppers, who just made the play, is back as the return man, and he's dangerous back there. Averaging a little over 10 per punt return. Had a career-long punt return against Michigan State in their last game and a career-long kickoff return. His punt return was 34, kickoff return was 49. And Mortel, you look behind him as he sends a line drive on the fly. Peppers at the 32, and he's off to the races. Peppers, one man to beat. He didn't beat him. Mortel saved a touchdown. The punter brings him down. But a 41-yard punt and a 41-yard return. Well, this was not a good kick. It was too low, and Peppers was able to field it on the fly. I mean, he didn't even have to make the first guy miss because he was at full speed when he caught the football. Heck of a tackle by 37, or this has been a touchdown. As it is, the punt return by one of our impact guys sets Michigan up at the Minnesota 29. Rudak wants to throw on first down. Fires too far in front of his intended receiver, and that was J.U. Chesson. He did a nice job of moving in the pocket. Hendrick Ekby was uh, was bringing pressure from the outside, and he does a nice job. Watch as Ekby comes from the outside. Watch Rudak just kind of move in the pocket and give himself another extra second, just not able to connect on the throw. They bring the other fullback in. Home up. Smith got nailed at the line of scrimmage. Ekes out a couple of yards, actually, with second effort. Big play right here for the Minnesota defense. They played very solid football in the first quarter. They had the lead early. They gave up the touchdown. They need to get a stop on this third down play. This is a team coming in that only averages 20 points a game against the number one defense in the country. They can't afford to let this thing get stretched out. If they can give up a 41 yard punt return and force a punt, that would be a huge feather in their cap. Rudolph pressured a little, throws, and this one's complete, and he's got a first down. Boy, once again, nice work in the pocket by Jake Rudolph. He knows there's pressure. He takes a major shot from Timms as he releases the football. But watch Rudolph just find another open space, deliver the ball, knowing he's going to get shot or get hit, and makes a nice throw. And he did get leveled as he let go of the ball. So back in the red zone for the Wolverines at the Minnesota 14-yard line. Dual tight ends again in for Michigan. Unbalanced line, extra lineman in. And Smith at about a yard. Here in Cochran made the stop. There's Peppers over there on the sideline. He has played some offense already tonight. Has the long punt return that set him up in scoring range again. Second down and nine for Jim Harbaugh's Wolverines. High backfield this time with Smith. They fake it to him, the throw to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. And it's J.U. Chesson. Nice throw by Rudock on that one. Really nice throw. He knew the safety was coming over from the middle of the field. And he throws that ball a little bit short and makes his receiver stop before the safety gets there. Really well done. Duke McGee, number eight, was coming to help from the inside. And Jake Rudock put the ball in the right spot. So Rudock, seven out of 11. His touchdown 
the sixth of his season and it was a strike. Just a 29 yard drive and five plays. J.U. Chesson. That's his first touchdown catch of the year and it puts Michigan in front 14 to three. Let's take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate Todd. Well this formation with the stack here it really forces these two defenders to kind of play loose. They can't jump up into coverage. Both guys with speed. Chesson's going to break inside Darbo outside and a beautiful throw by Jake Ruduck on time. That formation makes the coverage a little bit looser. And really, Rudolph could have gone either way with the football. Chesson knows he's going to take a shot from that safety, yeah. and right. uh, he held on. This one returnable. Myrick across the 20 out near the 25 yard line as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well guys you've spoken about the resignation of coach Jerry Kill. It has been such an up and down emotional week here for the Minnesota Gophers. Quarterback Mitch Leitner told us you know I knew something was up Tuesday evening when I got a text that said we had a team meeting at 715 a.m. on Wednesday morning. He said I couldn't sleep all night knowing it must be bad. They got there and there was coach Kill with his wife Rebecca and his daughter and told them the news. He said you know every single one of us on this team on the staff is here because of coach kill it has been a very difficult week moving on without their leader but they'll try to fuel that passion and that energy tonight in a positive way and they're wearing those gray uniforms in honor of Jerry Jerry who ordered those up they wanted an alternative uniform for the kids and uh, they had never worn them till tonight Tracy Clay says I'm not crazy about them but we're wearing them for coach so if you're turning on and you're going where's the Minnesota maroon and gold well, you still got the gold but tonight it's the the gray and golden gophers 15 winning seasons out of 21. The reigning Big Ten coach of the year from a season ago. Done so much for this program here and reviving and making gopher football relevant again. And not only for the football program, uh, the community and the whole state of Minnesota. Jerry's a, the only thing better than a good coach is a great guy. There's a throw out complete to the tight end Lingen. He's got a first down. And then Burke's got an update. That's a lot of touchdowns my friend. <laughs> Gophers here with a first down Again, at the 43. Minnesota needs to be better on first down. They've run nine first down plays only gained 11 yards. They've got to be more efficient. Wolverines with a blitz. Slider comes up firing got it to KJ May to KJ hold on. He did tough catch. See that's a first down win. Positive yardage it gives you second and manageable which ultimately should lead to a third and manageable if you don't convert on second down. I love throwing on first down but you just can't come up empty and put yourself in a hole against a defense like this. AJ got it right to midfield. We're at second down and three. Damn it. See who jumped. Was it Michigan's Maurice Hurst or was he pulled off flag on the field. Dan Capron's our referee. Offside with contact. Defense number 73. The five yard penalty results in a first down. And it is an automatic first down for Minnesota. Maurice Hurst very quick off the ball made the big play down on the goal line to stop a touchdown situation and force Minnesota to settle for a field goal on their second offensive possession that time clearly offside. Leidner of the gun on first and ten fakes it to May pulls up and throws down the sideline incomplete intended for Shannon Brooks and the fans looking for a flag as Brooks had a run out of bounds over there Jared Wilson and Jordan Lewis were covering I thought the ball was thrown out of bounds though I, I know the receiver ended up there. They tried to fool him. It was a little bit of a trick play. They faked the reserve to re reverse to KJ May. And I guess the ball was still in play. Yeah. Hill is the guy that basically pushed him out of bounds. Yeah. Second down to 10. 
Brooks trying to pop out the backside. Nice did best run of the night for Minnesota. Shannon Brooks had a big game against Purdue a few games ago. 20, 17 carries, 176 yards. Pretty physical runner for a, a true freshman. He had the longest play for the Gophers in that game, a 71-yard touchdown run. The longest pass play for Minnesota this year has been 38 yards coming into tonight. So while they do have playmakers, especially like K.J. May, they haven't had a lot of long passes or pass with a run after catch so far this year. Third down, and this time it's two. And Leitner's got the two and a bunch more. That's where he really comes in handy. He's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Pick up of 12. Well, they got James Ross. Again, Ross is a veteran linebacker, but watch the top of the screen, number 15. Guy that gets caught in no man's land. Whether to take the back of the quarterback, a good read by Leidner. And another conversion on third and short. The run on second down by Brooks was huge because it gave them the option to run on that third and short. At the 25-yard line, Gophers with another first down. Brooks got a block from his quarterback and spins his way for another first down. 11-yard gain. Nothing like having your quarterback lead the way. We talked about Mitch Leidner being a tough dude. Todd and I talked about it yesterday. We said, who's he remind you of? And you and I looked at each other and said, Joe Cap. Yeah, yeah just give him a single <laughs> bar. He's playing in the right state. <laughs> Old number 11. He led the Vikings to the Super Bowl after the 69 season. Eighth play of the drive. First down at the 14. Leitner keeps it again. Now well, he runs right into Peppers and picked up maybe a yard. See, there's there's no sliding with this guy. I mean, he's and he's not going to get to the perimeter and outrun somebody. So he thinks his best option is to try to run through a guy. There was a time at Minnesota here. He said, I thought they're going to make me a linebacker. And then they said, what did I get myself into here? Yeah. Well, he plays with a linebacker mentality from the quarterback position. 6'4", 237 pounds, and a real tough guy. Great leader. Second down and nine. Looking left, throwing left, and incomplete. Peppers breaks it up. Wolitarski had a hand on it, just couldn't hold it. Now, Jabril Peppers is truly one of the best defensive football players in the country. We've seen him as a return man. He played one, a couple downs on offense, but this is his natural thing, is defending the pass. Very instinctive, great ball skills. Wow. That's just great defense. Played over the top, basically, to break that one up. And it forces Minnesota into a third down and long. Third and nine. They need to get down to the four-yard line for a first. May in motion. Leidner goes to the end zone. May had it in his hands, out of his hands. And Wilson and Lewis are back there. Well, Michigan expected the ball to go to K.J. May as well. Watch double coverage, bracket coverage inside and out on K.J. May. That's a difficult way to try to throw the football. That'll force a field goal attempt by Santoso, who hit from 23 earlier. This one, 30 yards on the way and right down the middle. So Minnesota battles back. Good answer. Would have loved a touchdown, but they do cut it to 14-6. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy, and State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Happy Halloween. Some of the pictures of some of the kids of our crew. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> love that. There's an official Wolverine on the left, Batman in the middle. We actually saw a few scary sights last night with our particular get together. But we were safe in the presence of Wonder Woman. Yes, so. we were. Holly Rose Wonder Woman with her invisible jet and her golden lasso to keep everybody <laughs> in line. 
So Minnesota goes on a 62 yard drive in 11 plays a little over four and a half minutes to get the field goal by Santoso to make it a one position uh, one possession game 14 six. Santoso to kick Peppers who had a nice punt return earlier along with Chesson. Back for Michigan and this one's going out of the back of the end zone. So Michigan will work from the 25 yard line. Jake Rudock will bring him out. We'll be right back. I don't know if that guy can see the game or not. It's always great to have a football game on Halloween night. Whoa. Nice rush by Minnesota, but Butt got the pass as Rudock got hammered as soon as he let go of the football. When you run a bootleg, you tell the quarterback you got to get your head and eyes around quickly, and this is why. You never know who's coming to your backside that way. And Rudock does a nice job of getting rid of the football and absorbing the hit. He's taken some pretty good shots yeah. tonight as well. Six so. out of seven since his interception. Here's a pitch on the get around as Peppers got a nice block and tripped up right about at the first down marker. He got it. Well, again, Michigan looking for a little spark in their running game. Peppers in the game, a little pitch back to him. Before that play, only 24 rush yards on 10 carries for Michigan, and Peppers gives him the best run of the night. And remember, we showed you that graphic in their five wins, around 226 yards a game. He's struggling in that area a little bit, as Todd just said tonight. First down at the 36, straight ahead run. And it's about three for Derek Green as we check in with Holly. Well, we asked Coach Jim Harbaugh of Michigan what his quarterback, Jake Rudock, is doing well. And he said, you know, he's got a commanding presence. He makes all the throws. He makes the appropriate throws. But the thing that I really, really, really love about him is he does not get rattled. I have not seen him shaken. And I've tried to shake him. <laughs> Todd said, hey, have you talked about his mama? And he kind of looked at Todd like, what? <laughs> that did not occur to him, so I don't think it's happened. No. Strictly football stuff. Play action, Rudock, plenty of time. And had it knocked down, almost intercepted by Jack Lynn. That's the second time he's yeah. gotten his hands on a pass tonight. Nice work by the linebacker in zone coverage. He has his eyes on the quarterback. Jack Lynn's right here in the middle of the screen. Linebacker, eyes on the quarterback, moving with the quarterback's eyes, and gets a hand on the football. Big third down here for the Minnesota defense, and the fans are aware of that. Third down and seven. Minnesota jumped off and got back and flags did fly and it was Cochran that was halfway into the backfield. Offside, defense, number 55, unabated to the quarterback, five yard penalty, third down. Well, he would have been unabated to the quarterback if he yeah. didn't put the brakes on. Uh, and that's that's a costly penalty. I mean, you say, well, it's not that big a deal, but they had him third and long. Now they've got third and short, and it gives Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan offense a whole lot of more options on this third down play. Drake Johnson in the backfield behind Rudock. Third down and two. And they're going to do the bootleg again, and Rudock's got to throw this one to the ground, and it's Theron Cochran who was applying the pressure again. Well, Cochran made up for his mistake. He jumped off sides the play before, and this time he shows great pressure. Watch him right here get up the field and chase the, the quarterback on the bootleg action and forces Rudock to throw the ball away. That's, That's a huge stop for Minnesota. Sure was. Forcing a punt, they'll get the football back with five and a half minutes to go. Only one timeout remaining. And the kick is gonna bounce out of bounds. Minnesota had a couple of guys run over each other back there. But they've got decent field position to work with 5.39 remaining in the second quarter.
Direct TV takes you inside the drive as we look at Minnesota's second offensive series of the ball game. Well, they had an opportunity. KJ May is going to run to the sideline, and that's who Leidner's going to focus on. But the tight end is crossing the middle, and if he throws the ball right in here, he might get a touchdown. They've had two red zone opportunities. They've had to settle for field goals both times, and you just don't know how many chances you're going to have against this Michigan defense to score touchdowns. And with that, Santoso, two field goals. That's where Minnesota's gotten their points. Here's Rodney Smith into the secondary. Best run of the night all the way out to the 47-yard line. 22-yard pickup. <laughs> Well, the right left guard, Bjorklund, is going to pull. Watch number 73 pull and get knocked on his butt. I mean, he gets hit in the hole, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't slow Rodney Smith down. He took two defenders out of the play, and Rodney Smith right up on the inside for a big run. One of his longer runs of the season. 22 yards out to the 47, where it's first and 10 Minnesota with just over five minutes remaining in the half. Minnesota's offense has been pretty good in this first half. They've actually outgained the Michigan Wolverine. This time spinning to the line of scrimmage is Smith, and that's it. Ryan Glasgow, one of the first Wolverines there from his defensive tackle spot. When you're playing against a team that's played as well as Michigan's defense has this season, you just have to take advantage of the opportunities to make big plays. Of course, that's after that graphic and statistic after they went three games without giving up any points. Yeah. Liner throws on the run. By still, and he's still running. Touchdown. Rashad still a freshman from Leidner. 52 yards, the longest pass play of the year for the Golden Gophers. <laughs> I'll guarantee you Jeremy Clark's over on the sideline saying I couldn't have covered him any better than I did. How was I to know the quarterback was going to throw up behind the receiver. Right now Santoso's in for the point after. As Tracy Clay's apparently decided let's take one here and not push it. Two point conversion ties the game. But we got a lot of football left. A lot of football. Just like that, Minnesota goes 76 yards in three plays. And the capper, Leidner's touchdown pass to number 88. Great move. Stiff arm, got a block. That's all she wrote. Michigan 14, Minnesota 13. Coming into the night, there were some teams without a 45 yard plus completion, including both Michigan and Minnesota. <laughs> Todd just wiped that one out. 52 yard touchdown pass from Leidner to Still. And we'll bring it out to the 25 as we take another look at the touchdown. Well, again, Rashad Still's working one on one against Jeremy Clark right here. And he's going to run a corner route, and Jeremy Clark is in perfect position in coverage. He's right on his hip. If that ball's thrown outside like you would expect, he knocks it away. Instead, the ball was thrown on the back shoulder on a corner route, which is highly unusual, <laughs> and still turns it into a touchdown. Minnesota with 10 unanswered points, and now they got the crowd into it, really, for the first time tonight. They trail by one.
Rudolph fires near side, completes it. It's going to be short of the first down. Darbo on the catch, a pickup of about eight. We pick up Adnan again with an update. <laughs> Adnan Burke, a.k.a. the Hulk, will be along at halftime with Joey and Danny. Second and three. Rudot, deep ball. That is intercepted by Minnesota's Cody well, Polk. It's intercepted, but they're going to get interference before the interception. Cody Polk was working on Jabril Peppers. The ball was underthrown because of pressure. And I think they're going to get pass interference before the ball was picked off. And here's the call. Pass interference, defense number 12. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. In addition, sideline warning, Minnesota. This was really good defense by the linebacker Polk. He's right here. He's got coverage on Peppers on the outside route, but because the ball was underthrown, that's why there was a collision. If the ball's thrown down the field, Polk's in perfect position to make a play. As it was, the interference was called, and I think it was the right call. So instead of a turnover, it's a Michigan first down at the 47-yard line. They give it off to Drake Johnson on a draw play. Follows his blockers, gets across midfield to get five and into Minnesota territory at the 48-yard line. A little over three minutes to go. Michigan has all of its timeouts remaining. Minnesota had to use two early in the first six or seven minutes of the game. You wonder why we're seeing more of Jabril Peppers, Michigan, in the football game so far. 141 total yards, zero impact plays. They've not had one explosive play in the ball game yet. Minnesota has had five. On second and five. Following his fullback is Drake Johnson again, and he's got a first down. Polk, who had the interception, made the tackle, but it's a pickup of seven, and they'll move the chains. Here comes Peppers again. You knew with the off week, that they had a chance to get him more involved in the offense. Had kind of a humorous meeting with Jim Harbaugh <laughs> yesterday. And Holly asked him if he had a bigger plan for Jabril Peppers. And he said, well, you know, I don't have a plan to share with you. That's right. <laughs> we might have a plan, but it's not something we're going to share with you. Well, we're finding out firsthand. And Michigan. A little confused, going to use one of their timeouts. Their first, first, first. 2.12 remaining in the half as they'll go over to talk to Coach Harbaugh. Week 7 edition of Monday Night Football coming up, 8.15 Eastern on Monday night on ESPN. A couple of former number one draft picks will square off. Andrew Luck and the Colts, they've had a tough go. Cam Newton and the undefeated Panthers leading the NFC South. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 o'clock. There's the remaining unbeatens in the NFL, and somebody is going to be beaten because the Packers and Broncos get together. So again, the Panthers and the Colts on Monday Night Football. The Minnesota Vikings share this stadium that we're at right now until their new digs are done next year. And right now, Mike Zimmer's got the Vikings playing very well. You can actually see a little bit of the Viking logo underneath the M at midfield because they have to share the stadium. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little play action and try to get a deep ball. Both these guys on the outside can really fly. There's the play action. They wanted to go long, and now Rudock going to run with it and get out of bounds after a pickup of three. Jack Lynn ran him out over there as he got it inside the 40-yard line. Minnesota's defense, their last timeout, did not play very well against Nebraska. 
Nebraska had great balance. They pretty much did what they wanted to, run or pass. A much more spirited effort by the Gopher defense tonight. Gophers losses. They played TCU really tough. They were shut out by Northwestern, and then Nebraska beat them 48 to 25. And here they are hanging with number 15 Michigan and doing more than hanging. Actually, they're playing really well. Well, they're doing a great job against the run. Michigan only 52 yards rushing in the first half. And when you do that, you kind of make a team play one handed. And, and, and they've been able to kind of dictate what Michigan has to do to try to move the football. And look at that sideline. The sideline and the band got it all going on right now. It's a fired up Minnesota team. And they know should they be able to get a stop here. They'll get the ball back. Third down at six. Jake Butt is a, a guy to watch on this play. Rudock overthrew his man in the flat. Drake Johnson. And not a good throw that time by Rudock. And it is fourth down. Yeah, he got his footwork kind of messed up on that third down play. This might be no man's land. They might go for this. It looks like they are. At the 37. Punt might not do them any good. They're too far out for a field goal, so here comes a fourth down. Michigan, four out of 11 on the year, and their fourth down conversions. This is a pretty big one. Fourth down at six. And this is where I think you watch Jake Butt, number 88. Rudock, pressure coming from the back. Ball is out. He was hit by Eric Murray on a corner blitz. I'm not sure Minnesota doesn't have the football. No signal yet. It looked like Rudock was trying to throw the football. They do have the ball. Well, the back, Drake Johnson had to pick up somebody on the inside. Watch Drake Johnson pick up here, and nobody gets Murray coming from the outside. Not only gets the sack, the ball bounces around, and he's got a nose for it and ends up with a fumble recovery. Captain of the defense. Well, he's lined up over the slot, so he didn't have very far to run on that blitz, and he timed it perfectly. And Jake Rudock with his second turnover of the ball game. Minnesota with a ball at the 44. First and 10 with 54 seconds remaining in the quarter. Yeah, I think they may look and see if timeout yeah. Michigan their second 30 second timeout. Remember Minnesota had to use two first or timeouts in the first quarter a little confusion with their offense so they only have one timeout left here as we're at 54 seconds left in the half. So an opportunity if Minnesota can get down at field goal range to have the lead going to the locker room. A.J. May is their, their big play receiver. Hasn't had a big catch tonight. Three catches for 25 yards. I'm not sure I'd try to challenge this. It was fourth down, whether they recovered or not. Minnesota's got well, the ball on downs either it's, way. It's a matter of maybe five to seven yards, no more than that. Yeah. It's going to be Minnesota football no matter how they hash this thing out. But at any rate, Jim Harbaugh's challenge on the Michigan sideline on the play. So the guys upstairs will be taking a look. Bill Simons ahead of our replay crew. We get another look. Great speed off the corner by Murray to get to the quarterback. I mean, he was trying he was maybe to bring trying the to, arm forward, yeah. but it looked like the ball may have come out of his hand before because the ball came out at a funny angle. I think the arm came forward, but I think the ball had come out before his arm started to come forward. Bill Lemonier is up here with us in the booth. What do you think, Bill? I think you're absolutely right. I think the ball was off his hand and hand pushed it forward. The ruling on the field of a fumble has been confirmed. Okay. The ball has been placed at the proper spot. It is first down for Michigan. Michigan has used a timeout and its challenge for the rest of the game.
If it would have been an incomplete pass, the ball would have been at about the 37 yeah. yard line. So as Todd said, you know, it's a seven yard difference. Well, the one thing they, that I'm not sure replay looked at here is that it's a fourth down fumble rule. So it should go back to the spot where the quarterback fumbled the ball. And was it at the 44? At any rate, that's where they're starting it. Minnesota one timeout remaining. Play action. Leitner fires deep in the middle. Tips caught again. An underthrown ball, and this time it's Lingen, the tight end. <laughs> Mitch Leitner is living right. I'm telling you. Ball a little bit underthrown. It was hanging in the air. DeMonte Thomas got a hand on it, but credit Leitner, Lingen for not losing concentration on the football. Man down is Willie Henry. Timeout for an injured player. Crowd booing. Now because it looking. stops play, and Minnesota will have first down at the 17-yard line. Now he's not faking. He's one of their best defensive players. Had a huge game against Michigan State. Got a couple of sacks in that, and six for the year, which leads the team. Looking at his left shoulder. But another fortunate play for Mitch Leidner in the Minnesota offense. He ought to play the lottery tonight, yeah. the way this thing's going. I think it's Powerball night, Mitch. <laughs> Here's Link, another look. Lincoln's had two big catches on crossing routes. That ball hung in the air. DeMonte Thomas got two hands on it, but not able to come down with the football. And Lincoln, with great concentration, catches it off the deflection. Look at those eyes. Never left the football. They're already in scoring position right now, be it a touchdown or a field goal before halftime. And you talk about a team that won the coin toss wanted the football came yeah. out with a lot of emotion and they're playing with a lot right now too. 254 yards of offense in the first half against a team leading the country in total defense. They fake it to Brooks Leidner loads again getting pressured throws to the corner of the end zone broken up. KJ May had a hand on it. Jordan Lewis was in coverage. Jordan Lewis is an outstanding cover corner. We've talked about Jabril Peppers, but they got another one in Jordan Lewis. He is right there step for step with K.J. May and rips the ball out. Telling you, considering Chris Wormley was right in the grill of Leidner, that's a pretty good throw. Yep. Good throw and a great play by Jordan Lewis. Willie Henry is back in, by the way, at defensive end, so he's all right. 23 seconds till halftime. And a couple yards to the 15 for Shannon Brooks. And the clock will wind down. Again, Minnesota can only stop it once. Now it looked like Tracy Clays is playing for the field goal. Yep. Going to let the clock go down and call timeout. The run kind of a wasted play, unless this is what your strategy was all along. Timeout, Minnesota. Th Two seconds remaining, so the field goal unit will come on. Guy that's hit a couple already into the All-State field goal nets to Santoso, celebrating its 11th year with a good hands field goal nets. All-State makes contributions to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All-State's contributed millions in scholarship funds. So number 18's coming out to try to get Minnesota the halftime lead. My only thought on that is if you knew that was what you were going to do, I'd have run it back to the left and centered the football. Yeah. As it is, he's going to make this kick from the right hash as a right-footed punter. Sophomore out of pace, Florida. There's the angle that Todd's talking about. Peter Mortel to hold. Santoso, two for two tonight from 23 and 30. This will be from 32 yards out to try to give the Golden Gophers a halftime lead over Michigan. And Michigan's going to take a timeout. Timeout. Michigan, their second. So Jim Harbaugh trying to ice the kicker a little bit here in the final couple of seconds. Well, his defense has been on the field a lot tonight. And they're not used to this. Coming into the game, their numbers have been off the charts. But tonight, they've had their hands full with Mitch Leidner and the Minnesota Gopher offense. 256 yards they've given up tonight in the first half. And the most points allowed in a half by anybody uh, to anybody this year. 
Look at the smile on Leidner's face. What a night it's been for Minnesota so far. And it will be even better going to the locker room if Santoso hits this 32 yarder. They've done so many things well and so many things right in this first half of play. And to take a lead into the locker room would be huge. Again, Mortel to hold. Santoso from 32. Tucked it inside the right upright. Three for three. Minnesota, 13 unanswered points in the final seven and a half minutes of half number one. And they go to the locker room at halftime, halfway to the little brown jug. 75 yards in both of those games, only 45 yards in the first half tonight. That sideline still fired up as we start the third quarter. The Gophers in the lead and kicking off to Peppers and Chesson. And again, Santosa doesn't give an opportunity for a return as we check in third member of our team, Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, because Michigan had just 45 yards rushing in the first half, and the biggest rush was nine yards by Jabril Peppers. I asked Coach Harbaugh, how do you run the ball better? He said, we just have to be more fast and physical up front. He said that they are good on defense, even though they've given up as many yards as they have all season to this Minnesota defense. But the question is, how much can Jabril Peppers continue to play on offense? He's been in on so many plays, guys, returns, defense. And he's obviously their most explosive guy right now offensively. Yeah, he's got a lot of snaps through two quarters. We open the third quarter. The Jake Rudock of this Michigan offense at the 25. And Rudock play action. Throws, caught. And it's going to be a first down, and that's well, Amara Darbo. You, you have a couple explosive guys on this Michigan offense. Darbo's one. I mean, Pepper certainly is dynamic, but Darbo is a guy who can run and make big plays. That's his fifth catch of the game on the little out route. And Chesson on the other side has only had one catch for 13 yards. He's another guy they've got to get involved in their offense. Darbo's got 33 catches now for the year. That leads Michigan in receiving. Quick throw, wide out screen to Chesson. So they get those guys involved in back to back plays just like that. Seven more yards on the game. Yeah, I mean, when you're struggling a little bit offensively, get those guys involved. First two plays of the third quarter are throws. Now that should help loosen up things for your running game a little bit as well. Second down and three. Right now Michigan in with six offensive linemen so a real heavy run formation right now. Darbo in motion. Whoa, tailback is buried by Minnesota. Devondre Campbell was the first guy there on Derek Green. Force forces a third down. Well, it's a little bit of a delayed blitz right here. He, he waits, he pauses for a half a second, reads it, and then comes clean for a play behind the line of scrimmage. Pepper's back in there now. It's third down and four. Peppers is in the slot. They give it to him. It's an end around, double reverse. Chesson's got room. First down and a bunch more. Out of bounds around the 34 yard line. Make it the 33. See, whenever Peppers is on the field, you have to account for him. You know that he's a dynamic player. He draws a lot of attention. Everybody's thinking reverse to him. Double reverse. Nice call by the offensive coordinator, Tim Drevno. And all of a sudden here, Chesson, who was very quiet in the first half, has made a statement and made his presence felt in the third quarter. Ties for the longest pickup of the night for the offense of Michigan. 22 more yards to the Minnesota 33. Here's a stretch play, and inside the 30 goes Drake Johnson. Eric Murray, who had a big play in the first half, forcing a fumble and recovering it, was the guy that made the stop. So opening drive of the third quarter, 15th ranked Michigan trying to regain the lead here, trailing by two. They've got it at the Gopher 29 yard line.
Udot looks right and then goes that way and flags fly. We're going to have either a holding call or pass interference on Jalen Myrick. Yeah, he, he reached and grabbed him. He was beaten. The receiver, Darbo, was beyond him and he turned and grabbed him. Holding. Defense, number five. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. A single coverage going to the corner. It happened right there. It didn't happen at the end of the play. It wasn't that he knocked him to the ground. He reached and grabbed him before that happened. So who knows, maybe that's a good penalty. Maybe it would have been a touchdown. As it is, it's a first down at the 19. Darbo goes out. Maurice Mays comes in. Uh, Maurice Ways, I should say, to take his spot in a three wide out grouping. Out to Rudox right. Johnson. Big opening. First down run off the right side. He's all the way down to the six. Boy, what an impressive opening possession right now. For the Michigan Wolverines. Watch the center, Glasgow number 61, pull out in front of this play. He's the uncovered lineman. He pulls out, gets the lead block on the middle linebacker, Pope. And another good run on this impressive drive for the Wolverines. First and goal at the six. Tonight, two for two in the red zone. Peppers is back in there. Have to account for him anytime he's on. Shotgun. He's going to take the snap. And Peppers heading to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. First time we've seen him in the wild Wolverine, and he took it six yards for the score. Good execution. Tight end's going to block down. Watch 84 block down. They pull the center and the left tackle, Mason Cole. And then a good hard nose run by Jabril Peppers. Lowers his shoulder and drives into the end zone. The early throws on this drive open things up for their running game later in the drive. Kenneth Allen in for the point after. Can't ask for better than that from the Wolverines to open up the third quarter on the road. They regain the lead on a 75 yard march in seven plays. And Jabril Pepper says, I do this all by myself with a little help from my friends up front. Touchdown, Michigan, 21 16. Defense. Allen to kick with Myrick and May back deep for Minnesota. Myrick from the six. Hit at the 20 and goes down at the 21 as we take a look at how Minnesota's finding some success tonight brought to you by Expedia. Well, Mitch Leidner is throwing the ball down the field. Coming into the game, five of his six interceptions have been on throws when he's thrown it more than 10 yards. He's throwing caution to the wind tonight and taking some shots, getting a little lucky at times with the help of a deflection here or there. But they've turned out to be big plays that have really stressed and stretched this outstanding Michigan defense. And remember, we told you coming in, their longest pass play of the year was 38 yards. He's got a couple of those tonight, including a 52-yard touchdown play. Gophers first down at the 21. And a tough two yards for Shannon Brooks. Willie Henry, the first guy to meet him over there on the corner, along with Chris Wormley. The good news for the Michigan defense, even though they played more plays than they're accustomed to playing in the first half, they have great depth. They play six or seven defensive linemen. They rotate them in there. So they're used to playing a lot of guys. And so even though they played more in that first half, gave up more yards and points, they should be fresh for the, the second half of the game. The guy you just saw on your screen, number five, has played a lot of plays, both on offense, defense, and as Holly said, special teams as well. Leitner took a hit as he threw it. Got a man open, though, down the sideline as Brooks run out inside the 40. Little wheel run out of the backfield by the tailback, and Minnesota's got another explosive play. Well, he was working on Desmond Morgan, number three. And Desmond Morgan took one step towards the line of scrimmage, and as soon as he did that, he was beaten on the route. 
Morgan is a very good football player, but that false step towards the line of scrimmage got him beat on the wheel route and a beautiful throw under pressure by Leidner. And again, another downfield throw for a team that has not done that very well this whole season. Minnesota's got something working again at the Michigan 36 yard line. Brooks stays in there at the tailback spot. They fake it to him. Leidner rolling against his throw to the end zone and it's broken up. Uh, that's a, that's a tough run. one. He should have run that one. He's lucky that he didn't get that one intercepted. He rolls out. He didn't have it early. And when you try to throw deep late, it usually isn't a good idea. Just tuck this and run. Pick up a block from your tight end number 80 there, Wozniak. And he's lucky he didn't get it picked. And deep late into double coverage is yeah. even worse. <laughs> yeah, that's double bad. <laughs> so second down to 10. Gophers with three wide outs. This time at a pistol set and now Brooks breaks off that. As he'll get the carry. Only about a yard. James Ross the outside linebacker in on the hit along with Henry again. And Minnesota finds itself in a third and long. Thought it was interesting. Tracy Clays was telling us, you know, with Coach Kill not there the last couple of days of the week in practice, that he was usually the real vocal one with the offense. And with him not being there, that Leidner is the guy that kind of picked up that that slack and was very vocal with the offense, almost like a coach on the field. Bunch set of wide receivers to the left, and now they motion a man as Michigan comes with a big time blitz, and it pays off. Leidner's decked by Jared Wilson from his safety spot. Well, it's man free coverage. They're bringing extra guys and here's Wilson. He times it up, gets to the line of scrimmage and then clear path to the quarterback. Good timing by the safety. Finds a gap and gets right to Leidner. And with that sack, it took him out of field goal range or any attempt anyway. And they'll have to punt. Mortel in to kick. And it's Peppers again down there on the other end. We'll get a fair catch inside the 10 around the eight yard line. Michigan with the lead and this is one of the most dynamic players in all of college football. We've seen him do a lot of different things tonight. He's had a kickoff return for 43 yards. He had a punt return for 41 yards. Of course, his real job, his day job, is playing quarterback, <laughs> which he does very well. But a, an expanded offensive package tonight, you have to account for him. He wasn't the ball carrier on that one, but he was on this touchdown out of the Wildcat, a power run into the end zone. And Jabril Peppers has been all over the field tonight on both sides of the ball for the Michigan Wolverines. His fair catch a moment ago at the eight yard line is where Michigan will work. With a 21 16 lead. Greg Johnson hit at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got anything. Alex Keith made the hit. Holly. Well, Jim Harbaugh has a good reputation for taking guys that are good players and making them two-way guys. He did it when he's at Stanford with multiple guys, the most notable, Owen Marisek. But he has done a great job managing how much practice time that Jabril Peppers has on offense. He only misses a few minutes of meeting time. They're going to run his plays at practice. They run his whole package. So a good plan from Harbaugh. We're watching something pretty cool tonight. No doubt. Second down and nine. For the Wolverines is Rudox throwing and threw it behind his intended receiver broken up Jalen Myrick nice job on the corner for Minnesota. Yep. Third down and nine big play here for the Minnesota defense because the punt backed him up inside the 10 they get a stop here they should get the ball close to midfield and the student bodies right there in the ear of Jake Rudock. Not sure. to mention the band. In his own end zone, steps out of it, throws short, got it to the fullback, and he got buried at the 10-yard line after only a one-yard gain. Nice play defensively by Body Calhoun. Body Calhoun's been out for a couple games, injured, back tonight. Another one of those 
excellent cover guys that they have. They forced Rudock to dump it underneath. They covered everything down the field. It was a zone defense, and they got the stop on third down. You know what there's been tonight? A lot of good tackling yeah. on both sides. Blake O'Neill, tough spot in his own end zone right now with the punt. And he got a nice one off. Fair catch taken and bobbled at midfield, and Michigan's got the football. Okay, now here's the only thing I'm wondering. I thought Michigan was too close to the returner. I don't think they, I didn't think they gave him enough room Here, to I catch the, the ball clean. I thought the flag was coming out. There it goes. Yeah, I, I don't think he got a, had a fair opportunity to make the catch. Number 25 was right there next to him, DeMonte Thomas. See how they sort this out. Bill, what do you think? Well, the rule says that you've got to give them a yard in, in front and around to the sides. And that that uh, player was down way in too close to the catch there. interference. Number 25 on the kicking field. 15 yard penalty. First down, Minnesota. That's not only a big one, but it takes him relatively deep into Michigan territory. I mean, DeMonte Thomas was there, and the ball started to drift back. He tries to pull off, but he was right up into the, into the face of the returner. In fact, the guy that called the fair catch was May. The other guy, Harden, is the guy that tried to make the catch because there was so much traffic right there. So a big penalty against Michigan sets the Minnesota offense up at the 33-yard line. Mitch Leidner has uh, been good and lucky tonight. Let's see if he takes a shot here on first down. <laughs> Rodney Smith is behind him in the Minnesota backfield. Here comes the play fake. The throw is complete to May. And May picks up yardage down to the 26, about a seven yard gain. Coming up tonight, talk about all purpose guys. How about Christian McCaffrey and what he's done for Stanford? Leading the eighth ranked Cardinal against Luke Falk and Wazoo in a Pac 12 North battle. Stanford, Washington State follows our game on ESPN. How good has this kid been? He's been wow. Standing. And that whole team, Stanford, is, is really one of those teams similar to Ohio State a year ago, getting better and better each week out. Second down to three. Michigan thinking about a blitz. Leidner stands up, so does his fullback and his tailback Smith. As they change things up, gonna have to hustle. Two on the clock, they got it off. And the run is gonna be good enough for a first down, it looks like, and that's some tough sledding right there for Rodney Smith. These two young running backs really run hard. I mean, they are both physical kids. Rodney Smith, the red shirt freshman out of Georgia. Shannon Brooks, the true freshman. Smith, the this. son of a coach. Shannon Brooks, Class 4A Player of the Year in Georgia last year, over 2,200 yards rushing, 32 touchdowns at Pickens High School. And a first down at the 23. Well, I'd get right under center and go sneak here. It's less than a yard. Oh, it's third and one. I beg your pardon. Leidner. Leidner. Heading to the end zone. Touchdown. for the Minnesota quarterback. This guy's been good tonight. Sure has. You, he has made good decisions. He's been a leader. Making his former coach, Jerry Kill, proud. Santoso for the point after. Another lead change in Minneapolis, fourth of the night. A short field after the penalty on the punt return. 33 yards in three plays. The last 24, the tough guy quarterback. Gophers playing for the little brown jug with some emotion. Lead in Minneapolis. Gophers for 71 years, Sid Hartman. A young 95 years old, as Sid always says on his radio show on WCCO or in his newspaper column in the Star Tribune, a close personal friend of mine. That's what he calls everybody, but Sid and I are actually our close personal friends. Can you imagine 
covering one team for 71 years. He's watched a lot of go for football. He was pretty emphatic in his column the other day about the Minnesota presidency and uh, the interim athletic director making the current staff here in Minnesota a permanent one. We'll wait and see if that happens. Right now, let's check in with Adnan Verk in the studio. Keep us posted. Michigan starts again at the 25 yard line. Trailing again now by two. Play action. The fullback picks up the rush. Rudock throws down the middle and throws a strike to the 40 yard line. Let's take you back to Minnesota's touchdown as they regain the lead. Well, a couple things to look at. First of all, the safety, Delano Hill, right here. He's going to get caught looking in. And he doesn't make the play on the outside. He looks in the wrong place, and he's actually going to slip instead of being in a position to tackle. And then watch this block on the outside by the receiver, Wolotarski. That's the key block that Leidner needed. Leidner made a great read, but he got a great block as well. Rudock with three wideouts, including Peppers, who's back in there, trying to throw a block and got a pretty good one. And the tailback goes for a first down run, Drake Johnson. Johnson uh, just a completely here. different half so far for Michigan in terms of running the football. Their lines coming off the ball with more authority, more aggressiveness, and bigger holes. First down in Minnesota territory at the 46. Now another power set. An extra offensive lineman, so six offensive linemen in the game now for Michigan. Play action, Rudock all day to throw, and now he's going to run with it. Whoa, and he got hit, and a helmet oh, comes off. He was trying to get down. He never made it to the turf. He's on the turf now, and his head coach is coming out in a hurry. Jack Lynn, I think, is the guy that made the hit. And it didn't look good. Officials timeout for an injured player. Good decision to run. Get a positive gain. He starts to slide, and I don't think there was anything dirty on the play. It was just a good hit. He was hit from the backside. Stelter was yep. already airborne, it yep. appeared, and you can't change your flight pattern. There's 99 coming in. He's just going over the top. Wow. And so our concern, obviously, is with uh, Jake Rudock. Coach Harbaugh is out there with the training staff. And meanwhile, Shane Morris is warming up. Shane Morris was actually the starter in the game a year ago. And he went off with an injury. Yeah. When Minnesota won the little brown jug in Ann Arbor, 30 to 14. So half the Minnesota staff out there too concerned for the Michigan quarterback, as we are. We're going to take a break and we'll check on Jake when we come back. Quarterback 
Jake Rudolph went off under his own power. A lot of his teammates coming over patting him on the head. That's not the spot you should pat him on on the way to the sideline. As we take another look at that end of the run. Now again, just two hard hits. We showed you Shane Morris warming up. He was warming up with Wilton Spate, and Spate is the quarterback who's in the game right now. Six foot six sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia. He's thrown four passes all year. He's not going to pass here, and the Gophers probably knew that. Drake Johnson with Stephen Richardson all over him. Loss of a yard. They continue to look at Jake Rudock over on the sideline. Meanwhile, it's a third down coming up. And do they let Spade throw a pass here? He's 0 for 4 throwing the football on the year. Spade under center. Play action. Has time. Buys himself some extra time. Got to let it rip pretty soon. And he throws it away. That was really good coverage downfield by the Minnesota defense. They had everybody covered up. They flushed Spate out of the pocket, and then he had to throw the football away. And just watch the coverage all over the field here as Spate is looking. There's nobody open. He leaves the pocket and hopes that somebody uncovers on the scramble. And Minnesota defenders locked on everybody. Jake Rudock looks like he's heading to the locker room. Meanwhile, Blake O'Neill will punt. Keontae Harden is back inside the 10 yard line for the Gophers. And it went right through the hands of one of the guys, the Gunners down there, Thomas, who could have downed it around the two and couldn't find the handle as we check in with Holly. Michigan personnel for medical attention were looking at Jake Rudock. They were examining his neck up under his back, underneath his shoulder pads. They need to take him into the locker room to be able to take those pads off and get a better look at that shoulder and his spine where he took that hard hit. The good news also, they do have their team neurologist there who has followed him into the locker room, so he will get a comprehensive examination back there for Michigan. Sure changes the complexion of the Michigan yeah. offense, Ledge. Well, and, and I think the other thing about that hit was how he was bent when he was hit and that's a 280 pound guy hitting him with a lot of force. There's a lot of force on that hit. Brooks. Tough three. James Ross in on the stop as we're down to 320 remaining in the third quarter. Uh, and I think what the Michigan defense has to think now is look we may not have our quarterback and our leader back. We've got to step up and make some plays. As good as this Michigan defense has been this year, one area that they've not been good at is forcing turnovers. They've only forced for the game. He reads this right away. I mean, he is thinking touchdown all the way. Great play by number five. He's made some other ones tonight on offense and defense. And that's Minnesota with third and eight again. Little sigh of relief on the Gopher sideline after that one was dropped. Leidner keeps it again, trying to get wide. He's not going to get to the first down marker. Run out of bounds. About three yards shy. Good solid tackle by Jeremy Clark on the sideline, forcing Leidner out short. Right now, Minnesota thinking, let's get a good punt, flip the field. Michigan's working with a new quarterback. Let's make him go the long field against our defense. But I would make sure you you get a good kick here. Don't give Pepper something that he can field cleanly and return it up the field on you. There is Pepper's waiting at the 10 yard line. And Mortel got a good one here. Peppers has to chase it down, let it go through his hands. He's going to try to return this in the end zone. He's going down for a safety. Or are they going to say touchback? Wait a minute. Bill, what's the call on this one? Well, the kick. Well,
but the kick put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, so, but I think he touched the ball. That's the only reason he went back in after. Touching w does not change the status doesn't of it being a kick. It. Okay. If he caught it and carried it back in, gotcha. then that would be a different story. Good call by the officials. Okay. Good call by you, Bill. Yep. Yeah, I wondered why he went after the ball. He obviously touched it or felt like he touched it, thought that he had to go and retrieve it. So that could have been a little bit more disastrous than yeah. it was. Instead, it comes out to the 20 yard line. That's a big difference. Fans still not liking it here, but they don't know what we know. <laughs> or what Bill knows, I should say. <laughs> so now the pressure on Wilton Spate, who hasn't completed a pass all year and might have to throw a bunch, including right here. Again, runs out of the pocket. He's going to keep it. He slides down. Nice gain on the play. Got it out across the 25. Pickup of six. Don't forget, coming up on Tuesday, Reese and Kirk, Joey Galloway, Danny Cannell, David Pollock will reveal the year's first college football playoff top 25 rankings. College football playoff top 25. It's presented by Allstate. Coming up Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. With Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe, Brad Nessler here in Minneapolis where the Gophers are trying to pull off an upset at number 15 Michigan late in the third quarter. This is Drake Johnson. Nice run. Nice run, but it's going to come back. I think a holding call. Well, we've had some monstrous penalties tonight. Holding. Offense number 61. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Graham Glasgow, the center, one of the many Glasgow brothers on this team with the holding call. He was working on your shoe, Tim's, right here in the middle, number 52, and he got that hand around the neck. Negates a good run for Michigan. One of the best runs for Michigan on the night, in fact. Would have been a pickup of 14 instead. The ball just shaded outside the 15 yard line. Second down and 14. They can't afford many negative plays with a young quarterback in. They've got to stay ahead of the chains for him. Blitz on Spate. Throws before he wants to. Broken up by Minnesota. And Theron Cochran's had a good game as both a pass rusher and in that case in coverage. I don't think they'll throw it here. I think they'll run it. If you're going to throw with Spate, you don't want to throw deep in your territory on third down against this Minnesota defense. You want to throw on early downs when you're ahead of the chains or when it's a threat of both a run and a pass. They'll hand it off and punt the football here, I bet. In this case, it's the longest third down of the night for Michigan. Draw play to Davion Smith, and that's going to lose yardage as well. Minnesota forces a punt. It's going to be fourth down at about 16. Steve Richardson on the inside. Jack Lynn, the linebacker, both expecting run all the way on that play and collapse for the short game. Might be the final play of the third quarter. Well, Michigan's we, punting team comes out, but they won't kick it here. They'll wait and kick it in the other direction. So we talked about the change with the staff. Tracy Clay's on the sideline, not calling the defense. Heck of a Big Ten game through three quarters. Who's going to own the fourth and the little brown jug when it's over? We'll find out together. Fourth quarter coming up. The little brown jug. Those are the guys that are responsible. The band and then the players in between quarters as we head to the fourth and final stanza. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowan, our ESPN crew. Minnesota 15 minutes away from an upset. A lot of football left. Blake O'Neill to punt from his own goal line. This one should be returnable. Going to take a hop in front of May. And he's just wow. going to cover Good it there. Kick. Let's check in with Holly. 
Well, guys, Michigan does not disclose injury information, but Jake Rudock has come back out from the locker room. He does have his shoulder pads on, and it looks like he's going to try to throw a little bit here. I have not seen them give him a helmet back that would indicate maybe he's cleared, but Shane Morris and Rudock are going to try to throw a little bit right here. Let's see how he does. And again, that's the hit he took well, in the third quarter. If he's trying to throw, then he's cleared to play if he feels okay. Otherwise, there's no way they'd even let him touch a football. I think they need his presence if he can go. Meanwhile, his counterpart, Leidner, hands it off. Rodney Smith popped out of the backside, still on his feet. Smith out to the 43-yard line. Pickup of 17. Well, again, this is just good, hard running by Rodney Smith, number 24. He's just going to run hard up on the inside. Good block by the tight end, 86, leading the way. Lingen, who's made some nice catches. This Michigan defense that had allowed 65 yards rushing on average coming into the night. Smith's almost got that many by himself. First down for the Gophers at the 43. Play action. Leitner down the middle. He's got Lingen the tight end again. Well, we just mentioned Lingen with the block on the run before. This time they put him in short motion, and he slips out right underneath the tackle. Watch Lingen come in motion, and he's going to slip in right here between the guard and tackle and kind of goes undetected by the Michigan defense. Good execution and another big pass play for Leitner. And a perfect throw. Career high night for Brandon Lingen. Four for 108. Minnesota at the Michigan 34. The lead and the ball, and their quarterback runs for a couple. You know, in our production meeting this morning, Brad, I said for Minnesota to have a chance tonight, their quarterback has to play lights out. When Michigan State beat them two weeks ago, they stuffed the run, but Connor Cook threw for over 300 yards, and that was the difference in the game. Tonight, Mitch Leidner has played lights out. I mean, he's been a good decision maker. He's made big throws. He's at 226 yards and a touchdown, and he also had the long touchdown run. The junior captain out of Lakeville, Minnesota, has had himself a night so far. Rodney Smith again. Got a couple. Going to bring up third down. This is a Michigan defense that through the first seven games was used to playing somewhere between 60 and 70 plays in the game. That was Minnesota's 51st play. And we're early in the fourth quarter. You know, the time of possession is almost exactly even, but it doesn't seem that way no. right now. There's the numbers on the night. Come in averaging 9.3 allowed a game, which is number one not only in the Big Ten, but the country. Third down and six for the Gophers. They're going to keep it on the ground. They won't get the first down. They get inside the 30. That's about it. The clock will work its way under 12 minutes as field goal unit comes on. This guy's been money tonight so far. Ryan Santoso. This could be a long attempt here. You know, his career long. 52. That was against Purdue. This will be a 47 yard attempt. We're trying to add to the Minnesota lead. Got another one. 47 for Santoso. The Gophers lead by five. 11.43 to go. We got a good one brewing in Minneapolis. Harbaugh says, they're taking the cork out of that thing. What do you think's inside? Those are the kind of questions Jim asks. And again, Michigan's got to start at the 25-yard line as we check in with Holly. Well, Michigan quarterback Jake Rudolph certainly has tried to get back in this game. He tried to throw. He tried to run. He was in a great deal of pain. I just saw him go up to Wilton Spate, the quarterback who's in the game now, and shake his head as if to say, I can't go. Spate leaned over and said, it's okay. I've got you. So it looks like Rudolph's night is done. Tough way to end it. Two really tough quarterbacks playing against each other tonight. 
And just one of those strange hits. There was no penalty on the play. Just a bad hit. And that puts the pressure now on Wilton Spate, a redshirt freshman out of Richmond, Virginia. Well, he's not even in right now. No, they this, got... this doesn't surprise me. They've got to go with the guys that can win it for him. And Jabril Peppers, I bet, plays more offensive snaps this quarter than the whole game. Minnesota's going to realize that, and he's not going to be able to throw the football. Let's check in with Adnan. Those feisty nightbirds, right? Yeah. The Owls, Notre Dame, good one. The Gophers in Michigan, the great one going here tonight on Halloween. Spate under center. The give is to Johnson. And Spate's going to have to hit a couple passes because right now the Minnesota defense does not respect his ability to beat them throwing the football. Remember, he's 0 for the season. Hadn't played a lot, obviously. Forced into the situation tonight. They got a third down and a long four coming up right here. He has not looked comfortable staying in the pocket so far in this game. He's been a little bit too quick to flush out. He's got to stay in there and deliver the football down the field. Two tight ends in there. One of those Jake Butt in motion to the near side on third and four. Spate throws incomplete. Too far in front of his intended receiver J.U. Chesson. Cochran in there again. Boy, he has had a big night. Deflections, tackles, chasing the quarterback all over the place. Here he is coming from the outside again. Just a great upfield speed rush. You know, the back kind of got in the way of the tackle. Magnuson, number 78, couldn't get a good piece of the end because the back releasing Drake Johnson kind of got in his way. Last time O'Neill Ponty hit a beauty 61 yarder. Second straight, three and out. For the Wolverines. This kick they're going to have to clear out of the way again as it's going to spin its way to the 20. 49 yard punt that time. Just over 10 minutes to play. The Golden Govers of Minnesota. By Hilton.com, where you can book unbeatable prices on 12 unbeatable hotel brands. And in part by the 2016 Ford Explorer. Be unstoppable. Some of the snapshots of a big time Big Ten game tonight. Minnesota leading right now. 50,709 is the attendance of one of the top 10 largest crowds ever to be here at TCF Bank Stadium. And they have, there's going to be about 70,000 that say they were here <laughs> if Minnesota pulls the upset. Well, but still got uh, 10 minutes left. Minnesota so far tonight offensively has done everything that they've needed to do. And this is the one right here that has to hold up the turnovers because I don't think Michigan with a backup quarterback is going to be able to drive the length of the field for a game winning touchdown against Minnesota's defense. But a turnover could change things. Fake to Brooks. The throws complete out to Lingen who's had a huge night from his tight end spot. Sophomore out of Wyzetta. Big target, 6'5", almost 250, and he has been an active number 86 tonight. Well, both of these teams like to throw to their tight ends. Coming into the game, the tight end position for Minnesota, 23 catches. And they've, uh, they've been active again tonight, particularly Lyngen. Second down, seven. Leidner taking his time. Working some clock as it works its way down around 920 before the snap. Again, play action. This time he's in trouble. He's going to throw it away wisely. Don't forget coming up tonight when we're done. Eighth rank Stanford takes on Washington State in a Pac-12 North battle. That's immediately following our game. Stanford, one of the hot teams in the country right now. And it's always dangerous in the Palouse. Third down at seven. Minnesota would like to convert this just to chew up some more clock. The 
as Todd said, you can't get too fancy here. You don't want to turn it over. They haven't so far. I wouldn't throw around number five. He jumps up to the line. Leitner running out of time again. Look out. Down he goes way back around the 11. And did you see who they put Jabril Peppers on? Did they grab the face mask as they tackled Leidner? They had him wrapped up, nowhere to go with the ball. Might have been the body slam at the end of the play. They put Peppers on the tight end, Lingen, and he covered him like a blanket. And that's where Leidner was trying to go with the football. So they pick the flag up. That, you know, I, I think that's a good call. Delano Hill, number 44, is going to hit him at the end of the play, but not on purpose. The tackle's made by Ross. He's down, and Hill's trying to jump over the pile and kind of hit him with his leg. Yeah, he was trying to get out of the way. Yeah. You're right. Good call. Ryan Santoso is in the punt for Minnesota. He's regularly the kicker instead of Peter Morton. Tell. See if he can keep it away from Peppers. A much shorter kick, and it takes a Michigan bounce. Out of bounds around the 41 or 2. Only a 30 yard punt. So the backup quarterback still has his hands full with 8.36 remaining in the battle for the Little Brown Jug. College football. And with our Aflac trivia question, what's the oldest trophy still contended for in North America, professional or college? So it's not going to be the little brown jug. Well, this is a great place for Michigan to throw the football with Wilton Spade. Good field position, first down. Here it comes, but he hasn't completed one all year. He has now to his tight end butt. Before that play, Michigan had only had 46 yards on their last four drives. They'd had three three and outs. They got the, the short field after the punt. Great choice to throw the ball and to throw it to a big target, Jake Butt. Jake Butt comes out after picking up nine. Remember, a short field here because of the sack on Leidner and then the punt, which was a short one from the end zone. So you're giving your quarterback a shot as he can see that end zone on the goalposts instead of being 75 yards away. Back to the ground game. Top second effort. Maybe got Davion Smith a couple of yards. Jack Lynn in on the stop. And the clock works its way down under 745, and Smith is going to hobble off. And that'll bring Drake Johnson back out at the tailback spot. He got bent kind of funny at the end of that play, trying to eke out a yard or two and got bent backwards. Jake Butt not in the game as well, who came out the play before. So two of their key offensive guys not on the field on this possession right now. They do have a first down at the Minnesota 28. Spate throws complete to another tight end, Khalid Hill. And Hill picks up seven or eight as we check in with that net. All right, and at the 20 yard line, Michigan driving under seven minutes to go in regulation. See, two good, safe throws on first down, second down, and short. Good way of managing the young quarterback. That's Drake Johnson trying to follow his blockers and does it nicely to the 12 yard line. Jake Butt, by the way, the tight end's back in there. Not only back in, but getting a key block on the play. Here he is on the end of the line. A nice block on the linebacker Jack Lynn to get the corner for Drake Johnson and another first down. Such a valuable commodity to have a tight end that's an inline blocking yeah. guy and can still run downfield and catch it 30 yards down. And with field. a young quarterback, those tight ends in the middle of the field, right in his vision, big targets, they're nice things to have. Spate in the gun, 
from the 12. They keep it on the ground and inside the 10 goes Drake Johnson. And the clock will work its way under six minutes. See, unlike the Minnesota offense with Leidner at quarterback, Michigan's offense doesn't really show the quarterback pulling that ball and running. So Minnesota really locked in to the running back on those zone type plays. Jabril Peppers is back in on offense again. In the Wildcat again, the quarterback's out here. A direct snap coming up to number five. He's already scored one time tonight from six yards out. This time looked like he wanted to throw. He'll pull it down and lose a couple. He was looking for Jake Butt. Minnesota had him double cover. That's smart to let him try to throw it because you're thinking Minnesota's thinking run all the way, but Jake Butt is double covered and he has nowhere to go with the football. Good, solid, fundamental defense by Minnesota, bringing up third down and 10, or nine. 80 plays tonight. Line of scrimmage, the 12 now. Wolverines can get a first down at the two without a five minutes to go. Play action, Spate throwing to the end zone. Got his man, touchdown Michigan. And it's J.U. Chesson. 12-yard touchdown pass by the backup quarterback who hadn't completed a pass all year until this fourth quarter. Well, first of all, they put six offensive linemen in here. They took the tight end butt out and brought another lineman in to have great protection, and Spate threw it on time to Chesson. That's the second time Chesson has scored out of that stacked formation running the post. And that time a beautiful throw. Michigan's going for two to try to make it a three point game because Minnesota has all its timeouts and five minutes to work. Empty backfield. Three wide outs to the left for Spates and his tailbacks down to the right side and time Minnesota's out. going to take Minnesota. a timeout. They're first. So another lead change in the football game. The fifth of the night gives us a chance to bring back the Aflac trivia question for you. Oldest trophy still contended Aflac. for in North America in pro or college sports. Stanley Cup all the way back to 1893. We mentioned that jug has been played for 95 times. The first time 112 years ago today. They are fighting for it tonight. Boy, they ever. What a great throw by Wilton Spade. You know, everything kind of lined up for them to be more aggressive with him on that drive. Great field position after the sack and the short punt. Hit a couple passes on first down and then came up with a big throw on third down. And he went three for three yep. for 29 yards of the 33 and the touchdown. So his confidence picked up dramatically. Let's see if he's confident enough to get the two point conversion to try to make it 29 26. I liked what Michigan did with the protection too, taking the tight end out, bringing another lineman in. Mason Cole actually lined up instead of left tackle, lined up as a tight end on the left side. If they get this two point conversion, a Minnesota field goal only ties it. If they miss this, a Minnesota field goal would win it. They show the same formation, empty set. Three wide outs to the top and the tailback down to the bottom of your screen for Spate. Waits and waits, throws at the last moment and got it for the two point conversion to Darbo. Well, this is a quarterback that is starting to feel good about himself on this drive. He's looking left all the way on this. Watch his eyes left, left, left. Start to scramble, eyes go right. Two-point conversion, good. In-depth analysis of every game. It all starts tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock on ESPN. Don't forget to set your clocks back. You get an extra hour of sleep. Never really works for us because we always wake up in some hotel and don't know where we are most of the time. Right. Nice drive by Spade and the Michigan Wolverines to regain the lead. And now Minnesota will work from the 25 yard line after we check in with that man Burke again.
And we are 457 away from ending in regulation. But Minnesota only needs a field goal to tie. Five minutes, just under five to go. The Gophers have two timeouts remaining. Well, Leidner has been the leader emotionally and physically all night, and he's going to have to do it again. And remember, the Gophers have not had a turnover, and that's key. On the ground, flags fly. We're probably going to have a holding call, and that's going to be a crusher. Because it's going to put Minnesota in a long yardage situation when they would just as soon not throw a lot if they don't have to. Personal foul, chop block, offense, number 79, number 86. Half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. The same result, different penalty. Yeah. And only the second offensive penalty on the Gophers tonight. The first one only five yards. This one a much more costly penalty. That'll take it back to the 12 and a half. That field looks mighty long right now for the Gophers offense. They pull out their tight end who's been their biggest weapon right now. Go with three wide receivers. They'll keep it on the ground anyway. And good run got some of the. Yardage back. Bolden made the tackle on Smith. 24 Smith, ball carrier. And now Lingen comes back in. Now, right now, Leidner's just got to think on this play. I got to get part of this yardage back. Yeah. I want to try to get it to about third and seven or eight if I can. Not trying to get it all back in one throw here. 252 tonight for Mitch so far. Play action. He is going for a chunk, but there's nobody out there. Closest guy was Wozniak, his other tight end. It was way over his head. Well, if you're over Wozniak's head, you threw that ball really high because he's <laughs> six foot ten. <laughs> and he's being guarded by Peppers. And again, that, that's not a favorable matchup because Peppers guards everybody. Remember last year they had a great tight end. Went to the NFL with the Ravens. Max Williams was an All-American. A.J. Mays only got one catch in the second half. They could use one out of him right now. Third down and 17. And that's May in motion. They fake it to him. Middle screen. Rodney Smith broke out of there and he wow. might have a first down. What an effort by Rodney Smith. There were two Michigan Wolverines that were going to stop this for a very short game. And I don't know if it's fatigue or if it's just tough, hard nosed running by the freshman Rodney Smith. Watch this, two guys, two veteran linebackers, both missed the play. Desmond Morgan and James Ross both had a shot at him. Neither one could get him on the ground. First catch by a Minnesota running back, and on third and 17, it goes for 17 and about six inches. And here's the guy that got it, and now he bounces outside. Nice stiff arm, good run. Set the ball, Gary. We're down at 318 as he goes out of bounds. Darren Wilson pushes him out and Rodney Smith says coach I need a I need a quick breather and that means Shannon Brooks comes back in Gerard Wilson getting up a little bit gimpy on that play the safety trying to to bounce it off shake it off right now but he doesn't look like he's 100 percent hey we got I don't think this guy's 100 percent either uh, uh, he might have been drinking something that was 100 percent uh-oh, uh-oh. This is going to be, that's not a good place to land over there on the sideline. We're not showing you what's going on. And somebody with a costume came on the field and will be escorted uh, by security somewhere to jail. <laughs> or at least out of the stadium. So that stopped play when Minnesota had something working and also when Jerry Wilson seemed a little bit shaken in the secondary for Michigan. That gave him a chance to catch his breath a little. Yep. Meanwhile, with 303, it's second down and three. Shannon Brooks in the backfield with Leidner. It's KJ May in motion. Leidner fires, and what a catch by May. We just said he'd only had one grab in the half. 
A 14-yard strike that time from Leiter. Well, he worked inside of Jordan Lewis, number 26, and this might have been the best throw of the night by Leidner. I mean, there is no air under that. That is a shot right in there to K.J. May against tight coverage, but a perfect throw. Minnesota at the 44 of Michigan. Two and a half to go. And now it's Leidner keeping it himself. Puts his head down, picks up five more. Well, Tracy Clays in his first job as the interim head coach. In quite a tussle here. Going to have some decisions to make as we go down the stretch here. Is he playing aggressively to try to get to the end zone? Or is he playing to set up a field goal to put this game in overtime? Under two minutes, second down and five. Lincoln, the tight end on the move. Straight ahead to the line of scrimmage is all for Shannon Brooks as James Ross made the stop. And we're going to have a third down and five coming up. We mentioned that Tracy Clays has been with Jerry Kill for 21 years. The offensive coordinator, Matt Limegrover, has been with them just about the same amount of time. This staff, a lot of continuity. Very familiar with each other, and uh, and that pays off in a situation like this right here. Timeout, Time Minnesota. Minnesota. 135 remaining. If you didn't hear it, Tracy Clay's the interim head coach, with his words to his team in the locker room before this game started. Let's have a listen. That whole uniform in gray, you're wearing it and honor him and everything he's done for all of us. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. What's more important is this. Remember what Coach Phelps said. You're all amazing people. It's not that uniform. All right? Emotion and playing on emotion causes problems and it's short. You play with great passion. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Remember, passion lasts forever. And every time you get in a bad mood, feel sorry for yourself, look down at that uniform. We owe that guy one last time every damn thing we got. Everybody got that? So don't quit. Have fun. I mean, play your ass off and let's get after it. You notice the yes sirs. Emotion early, passion throughout, and still going. And they need a third down and five right here. Big play right here. Both tight ends shift over to the left side. Leidner in the gun. Michigan thinking about a blitz. They bring it. Leidner's got to get rid of it way before he wanted to. The blitz paid off. Taco Charlton got in there, got pressure on him, and it's fourth down. Yeah, nice call by D.J. Durkin, the defensive coordinator. Brought two guys from the outside, and Minnesota didn't have enough blockers. Got two guys coming here. They can't block them. They can only try to pick up one. And Leidner does everything he can just to get rid of the football. Ledge, here's the ball game. They're in no man's land at the 39. Too long for a field goal to tie. Fourth down and five to keep the drive alive and the dream alive to pull an upset. Here's the play of the game. Again, the pressure coming. Leidner down the middle. Oh, what a catch wow. by K.J. May. Wow. There is no way he gets this ball, but somehow he did. That's two catches in a row on Jordan Lewis, who has excellent coverage. And even though the ball touches the ground, it is a secure catch by K.J. May. They may look at this again. The previous play is under further review. They may look at this, but I'll tell you what, he secured the ball, there was no bobble, and the ball's allowed to touch the ground, you just can't use the ground to help secure the catch. That was excellent coverage, wow. again, by Jordan Lewis, and Leidner with a perfect throw at a time they absolutely had to have it. Call on the field is a catch and a first down at about the 27-yard line. See, he's reaching the ball out. I mean, that, that was a clean, beautiful catch. The coverage was even, it almost looked like Lewis was After holding review. with his left Rolling hand. Down the field is confirmed. First down. First down, Minnesota. The Gophers took over at their own 25 with 4.57 to go. Now they're in the 10th play of the drive, and they've got a first down 
at the Michigan 27. Well, and again, I, I think you still stay aggressive here. I mean, you have pushed this number one ranked defense of Michigan around all night to the tune of 435 yards. I think you try to win it with a touchdown and stay aggressive with a hot quarterback in Mitch Leidner. Rodney Smith is back in there, tailback after getting a breather for a couple of plays. Leidner's going to keep. Tripped wow. up, or he might have had a first down. Now that had to be Peppers again, right? It was. I mean, that was a big play, potentially a touchdown, if not for Jabril Peppers. Watch number five just flash and catch the ankle of Leidner. Clock is running. At the 23-yard line, we're going to be down to 30 seconds by the time the Gophers take this snap. Leidner, pump fakes, wants it all, goes to the corner, got it! Wolotarski, touchdown! The expression hasn't changed on the interim coach's face. It might in 19 seconds, though. Well, this was beautiful. They used the same formation that they've used to throw the slant to K.J. May. They take Wolitarski out in motion away, and then the double move. He fakes the slant and then breaks it back outside, and they stayed aggressive. Now, his knee may have touched down, before the ball crossed the plane. But what an aggressive play call to attack the end zone with a hot quarterback. Boy, they set that up. I think the knee touched before the ball crossed the plane. Bill, what do you think? Well, he finished the process of the catch. He, hang, he did hang on to the ball. The view we have here shows the knee down and I think a pretty good clearance that the ball did not break the plane of the goal line. So they'll put the ball at that spot and they're going to wind the clock. Well, wind the clock that only has 19 seconds left. The Minnesota's but, only got one timeout yeah, left. I, I think maybe they use the timeout here. I wouldn't rush a play here. Either that or you know exactly what you want. After review, the receiver caught the pass but was down short of the goal line. It will be Minnesota's ball, first and goal, at the one half yard line. That close. If they're going to wind the clock, you have to be ready to go and maybe save that timeout. Run one play here, and if you don't get in on this play, then you use a timeout. Leidner under center. Remember, he's already run for one touchdown tonight. They got a full house backfield behind him. The center judge is going to trot out of the way. There goes the clock. There goes the clock. 17, 16, 15. Now they shift. Leidner's oh going to go They're into the gun with 10, 9, 8. Got a hustle. Leidner rolls to throw. He's in trouble. Lobs it incomplete. And there's only two seconds oh. left in the game. Boy, I, I don't know if Leidner knew that they were winding the clock. Because that play and all the shifting took so much time. And Jim Harbaugh was racing down the sideline to call timeout. And good thing for him, that he didn't. they didn't get the call. And now Minnesota takes its final timeout. I just don't Time know out. whether Minnesota. anybody on the Minnesota sideline knew that they were going to wind the clock because they had so much motion and movement in that formation, they wasted about 10 seconds. And then they're at the half-yard line with a 240-pound quarterback who can run, and they shifted into the yeah. shotgun. Well, we're either going to have a field goal to send this to overtime or Minnesota's going to play to win. Quick check in with Adnan. And that action's all come down to one play. 
I really think Brad that they were not aware that the clock was going to start up and Minnesota is going to play to win for the little brown jug on the final play. They're out of timeouts. Obviously there's one snap barring a defensive penalty or it's over and they're that close to the goal line. Leidner under center. Full house behind him. He'll try to do it himself. Did he get there? No signal. No touchdown. Michigan has won it. The Wolverines somehow survive when it looked like Minnesota was going to be able to retain the little brown jug. Jim Harbaugh shooing all his players off the field right now as the celebration had begun. Well, plays on the goal line are all about leverage. Who gets the ruling low? on the field is that the runner was stopped short of the goal line. That ruling is under further review. I don't think there's any way he got the ball to the end zone. Not in that mass of humanity. Watch the leverage. Watch how low that front gets for Michigan. They get underneath the Minnesota linemen and drive them back. And even though Leidner's 240 pounds, he doesn't get close to getting the ball in the end zone. And I just think as valiant of an effort that Minnesota had tonight and their quarterback, those last two plays, wow. Official review still going on. What we expect, though, is that Michigan, with a goal line stand on the last play, has won this by three. What an unbelievable night by that young man. But it looks like the last time he touched it was not good enough. And everybody in the building still holding their breath, no matter who you're cheering for. Yeah. Here comes the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. The game is over. They've done it 102 times in the past for the Little Brown Jug. Not too many of them any better than this one. And Michigan survives a scare in Minneapolis to go to 6-2 and 3-1. And, and there comes the Little Brown Jug that Minnesota.